how many carbons are in the sp3 hybridization state? For this molecule, how many carbons are in sp3 hybridized? One, two, three, four. What else? Five. What else? Mm. Wait, those ones are the ones in the SP2 hybridization. Yeah, I could use. It sounds like you're on the right, and I was wrong. Let's try again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Very good. You were right. What's the hybridization of this oxygen? because it's got two lone pairs and two attached atoms. And what's the hybridization of this oxygen? Sp2. Because it's got two lone pairs and one attached atom. Good. What is the value of the HOH bond angle in water? Um, 104.5. Right, so based on this test, it looks like I actually wanted to have that number memorized. OK, good. If it was a regular tetrahedron, it would be 109. But, um, 0.5, but remember that the lone pairs are squishing together the two hydrogens, so they're closer than usual. So this is not a um, correct way to draw it. It's not really linear like this. We, shot, we showed that it really looked bent. Use VSEPR to deduce the shape of the molecule DEH2. The yeah. idea is use VSEPR to deduce the shape of this molecule. Um, B E has two lone pairs, and H each has a lone pair. So there's a single bond between H, B, E, H. So it's linear. Let's see, I wasn't quite sure what you meant by the lone pairs there. What would be the hybridization of this? SP. Yeah, because it has two attached atoms and no yeah, lone pairs. Yes. Yeah. This is so far to the left in the periodic table that it can have a very incomplete octet. So it doesn't have any lone pairs. Just two hybridized orbitals it makes sp hybridized. So this would be linear. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is uh, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. That's just the theory we've been using all this time that said that the electron pairs repulse each other. Well, to get as far away from each other as possible, in this case, they would take up a linear shape. Good. What's the hybridization of this atom? What's the hybridization of this atom? Sp. Good. There's two attached atoms and no lone pairs, so two hybridized orbitals. We haven't seen a carbon with two double bonds on both sides, but that would be this. What would be its uh, molecular geometry? Linear. Yeah. And the bond angle? Uh, 180 degrees. Good. What's the hybridization of this carbon? Sp2. So what's its uh, molecular geometry? And it's uh, geometry and the bond angle? Um, 120 degrees. What's the hybridization of this atom? sp There's two attached atoms and one lone pair. So three hybridized orbitals. Good. So what's going to be the um, orbital geometry? Um, right. Um, however, um, we would actually call this bent molecular geometry because uh, we're not going to take into account the lone pair. Um, so if you just take into account the atoms, this would actually form a bent shape, kind of like water. Now, they didn't ask you that here, so maybe that would be a little too tricky. How many sigma and pi bonds do we have here? Sigma bonds and four pi bonds. One, two, three, four, five sigma. One, two, three, four, pi bonds. Great. How many sigma and pi bonds here? Probably do here is actually 
draw this out. This would be easy to lose some credit on. So what do we decide for the number of sigma bonds? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And how many pi bonds? Three. Good. What's the hybridization of this nitrogen? Um, SP. It's got one attached atom and one lone pair. We expect it no. So two hybridized orbitals. That would be SP hybridized. Good. Okay, well that's hybridization and bond angles and sigma and pi bonds and the orbital diagrams for uh, sigma and pi bonds. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box thank you